Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will give brief idea about IoT controllers such as ESP8266, Node MCU, ESP32 and Raspberry Pi. After watching this video, you will be having fair enough idea about how to select IoT controllers for given project or for given application. First of all, you need to understand the basic difference in between normal microcontroller and IoT controller. See in normal microcontroller, what we do is we interface input and output devices with controller and based on the program inside controller, input devices can communicate with output devices. While in IoT controller, we have controller that is connected with input and output devices. Here input devices will be providing data and that data will be uploaded on the internet. On internet, there can be application and based on program inside application, it will give command to controller and controller will control actuators means it will control output devices. So basic difference in between IoT controllers and normal microcontroller is there based on accessing internet. So first question is why do we need an IoT controller? Let me take one practical scenario. Here we have normal microcontroller. This normal microcontroller can be 8051 microcontroller or it could be at mega 32 microcontroller. Here this microcontroller can be interfaced with input devices. This input devices can be keypad, push button or sensors. Here I have shown ultrasonic sensor. This input devices that can give input to this microcontroller. And based on the program inside normal microcontroller, it can control output devices. Here we can interface stepper motor, buzzer, seven segment display or LED display. So normal microcontroller can communicate in between input and output devices based on program inside microcontroller. This normal microcontroller cannot communicate with internet directly. If you want interface of this controller with internet, then we need extra Wi-Fi or Ethernet module. So that is what the basic difference which is there in between normal microcontroller and IoT controller. Let me give you an example. Here let us consider we have Arduino Uno board. See with this Arduino Uno board, we have IO ports. You can observe here we have IO ports and based on these ports, we can interface input and output devices. But this Arduino Uno board cannot communicate with internet directly. If you want communication with internet, then we need extra board of Ethernet W5100 shield network expansion board. You can mount this board over Arduino Uno board you can observe. See here we have Arduino Uno board and here we have Ethernet W5100 board. This pins that is compatible with Arduino Uno pins. So by directly mounting this on this Arduino Uno board, one can have a communication. Here we have Ethernet port with W5100, right? So this Ethernet port that can communicate with internet. But here, see, by additional board, we have size expansion as well as cost of the application will increase. So here what we do is we prefer IoT controllers. Let me give brief idea about few IoT controllers. So the first very basic IoT controller module is ESP8266. With this module, there are few issues. One is based on number of IO pins. You can observe here we have few IO pins only. Second is based on programming of this module. See with this module, we don't have USB port. So you cannot program this module with the use of USB port. And this ESP8266 module that cannot be placed on breadboard directly, right? So after this module, we have ESP8266 node MCU. With this node MCU, 
we have same processor as it is there with ESP8266. So here we have same processor. But with this module, we have USB connection and we have more number of IO pins, right? So here we are handling more IO and here we have better flexibility of programming. So out of these two, I used to prefer ESP8266 node MCU, right? After that, we have third module that is ESP32S development board. With this board, here we have USB interface by which one can program this. And here we have higher number of IO pins by which one can interface input and output devices. In future coming videos, I'll be making many projects using ESB32 in this video lecture series itself. Now, let me discuss about next. IoT module that is Arduino Nano 33 IoT board. See Arduino Uno that cannot be interfaced with internet directly. So Arduino have developed Arduino Nano series that is compatible with Wi-Fi interface by which one can connect with internet. After that we have one more module that is Raspberry Pi 5. See this module that is a computer that one can say with this module we have Linux operating system with this module we have so many IO interface we have USB connection we have Ethernet connection we have Wi-Fi connection we have type C connection we have camera interface so so many functionalities are there with Raspberry Pi 5 module for high-end applications one should prefer Raspberry Pi 5 and one more module that I would like to explain is Beagle Bond Black. See this module is having high end computational complexity by which one can have high end applications like AI and ML. Here we have USB port, we have Ethernet port, we have many IO terminals by which one can have high end applications, right? So for high-end applications, one can go for Raspberry Pi 5 and BeagleBand Black. For complex IoT applications, one can prefer ESP32 or Arduino Nano. For simple IoT applications, one can go for ESP8266, right? And for moderate level IoT applications, one can go for ESP8266 Node MCU. Now let me compare all these boards based on different features. If you talk about processor, then with ESP8266 and with Node MCU, we have 32-bit Pensilica L106 processor. With ESP32, we have dual core Extensa LX6 or LX7. LX7 is having higher computational capabilities. With Raspberry Pi 5, we have quad-core ARM Cortex A76, right? If you talk about clock speed, then ESP8266 and Node MCU is having clock speed up to 160 megahertz. ESP32 is having clock speed up to 240 megahertz. And with Raspberry Pi 5, we have very high clock speed up to 2.4 gigahertz. So based on clock speed, one can understand this Raspberry Pi 5 can handle complex tasks. See, based on RAM, ESP8266 and Node's MCU is having 160 KB of RAM. ESP32 is having 520 KB of RAM. While Raspberry Pi 5 is available with 2 GB, 4 GB and 8 GB of RAM. If you talk about storage, then ESP8266, Node MCU and ESP32 can have storage based on external flash while Raspberry Pi 5 is having micro SD card and one can interface memory with USB port even. If you talk about Wi-Fi capacity then with ESP8266 and Node MCU only single band Wi-Fi is there at 2.4 GHz while with ESP32 we have dual band Wi-Fi at 2.4 and 5 GHz while with Raspberry Pi 5, we have dual band Wi-Fi at 2.4 and 5 GHz. 
if you talk about bluetooth then bluetooth is not available with esp8266 and node mcu it is not available it is available with esp32 and raspberry pi 5 here we have two options of bluetooth one is classic bluetooth and second is low power bluetooth right if you talk about general io pins then with esp8266 and node mcu one can have 17 general purpose io pins with esp32 up to 34 number of io pins are available while with raspberry pi 5 we have 40 io pins right if you talk about usb ports then it is not available with esp8266 due to which there were some issues in terms of programming of this module and with same processor we have node mcu where we have micro usb port by which programming is getting easier with esp32 we have micro usb or type c connection by which one can program esp32 with raspberry pi 5 we have usb port we have type c port we have ethernet port right so there are so many ports available with raspberry pi 5 in terms of ethernet connection direct ethernet connection is not available with 8266 microprocessor with esp32 we don't have ethernet connection directly raspberry pi 5 is having ethernet connection up to 1 gbps right see this esp8266 node mcu and esp32 that is connected with internet with the use of wi-fi only right while this raspberry pi 5 that can be connected with internet with the use of wi-fi as well as with the use of ethernet if you talk about operating systems then with esp8266 we have bare metal artos operating system with node mcu we have lua arduino and c based firmware while with esp32 we have free artos arduino and c based firmware while with raspberry pi 5 we have full linux operating system with which one can have raspberry pi os or ubuntu os if you talk about power consumption then with esp8266 we have power consumption of 20 to 200 milliampere with node mcu we have 70 to 220 milliampere with esp32 we have 30 to 300 milliampere and with raspberry pi 5 we have 2 volt to 12 volt that is quite high so for high and complex applications one can go for raspberry pi 5 where we have higher power requirement and if you observe here range of the power is shown why the reason is this modules can be there in ideal mode in active mode right there are different modes available see in ideal mode it will consume very low power and in active mode it will be consuming more power that's why range of power is shown from lower to higher power consumption right if you talk about applications then esp8266 that one should prefer for basic projects of iot node mcu that should be preferred for iot prototyping or one can say some complex iot projects compared to this module right while esp32 that can be used for advanced iot projects but if you want high end complexity then one should prefer raspberry pi 5 where one can go for ai ml and robotics so based on your requirement one should prefer these iot controller modules i hope you have enjoyed this in future coming videos i'll be using esp32 and using esp32 i'll be developing so many projects by which you will get to know how one can go for iot applications still if you have any confusion just place that in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video